Hello everyone, here I am coming to you from in my studio um, at 6.30 in the morning. So it is a winter's day here and I'm sorry if you can hear the um, red-tailed cockatoos going crazy outside my window. Um, you might hear them screeching a little bit. Thank goodness today it is not raining. We've had, it seems like, weeks of heavy rain, which is great. Um, but it's nice to have a little bit of a break from the rain. Anyway, what I'm having, what I'm sharing today is um, I've had a few inquiries and some really good response to um, my boy theme layouts. So I thought I'd show you um, some of my um, boy layouts from the last, I don't know, half of the year. Um, I think most of them I've made this year. There might have been a few that were done over the last Christmas holidays, but they're all pretty recent. And uh, I wanted to show you because um, a few people commented that they find it really difficult when they subscribe to a monthly scrapbooking kit. And often the kits are very um, uh, floral heavy or heavily aimed at um, girls and females. Um, and I just thought I'd, you know, I get a bit annoyed with that too. And I must admit, sometimes I even stop, stop and cancel a subscription because I do feel that we are overwhelmed with how many female orientated um, collections that are pushed out by the companies. And it would be nice to see some more boy ones. But I thought I'd just show a few where I have incorporated papers that are really targeted at a female audience um, and just show you some other mixed media ideas and also show you that I don't always work with mixed media because if I did I would never get my albums completed because as most people realize um, mixed media is uh, time heavy well, it certainly adds a bit of time um, to your layout so that's why I encourage people if you're looking at mixed media what I like to do is like build up a stash of resources at one time you know spend a day just playing and making a whole heap of tags for instance or a whole heap of background sheets or a whole heap of mats that have, you've sanded or inked and that sort of thing and then you can just throw them together into kits um, my, I'm a big believer in creating layout kits because it just speeds things up completely. I put the papers in there. I put the embellishes, embellishments in there. Um, I will even put stamps and stencils uh, within a kit. And I've got like three large, um, uh, what are they? They're like uh, plastic, um, oh, I've lost the word filing cabinet they're big um plastic containers that are designed like a filing cabinet not that i have those hanging parts in there but i use those to hold all my uh, page kits that i make <clears throat> and i just pull out random ones so sometimes i might be pat, um, scrapbooking recent photos and sometimes i might be scrapbooking photos that are 10 years old depending on which ones I'm pulling. Um, with my photos, what I try to do is each month, I do try to sit down at the computer and print out all the ones I know that I want to scrap. Obviously, that's not all my photos because like everyone in this digital age, we take way too many photos and it's just impossible to record them all. You just can't possibly do it. So let's have a look and chat about some of the layouts. Um, I hope this is looking okay to you. It may look slightly off as I have a sloping table. It's an old drafting table. So we're not on a flat surface and I was too lazy to move my filming setup <laughs> to uh, give you a flat surface. So just understand that if it's slightly narrow at this end, it is just because it's on a slope. All right, so here's the first one. And in this one, I have used some very girly colours and some girly papers. I've got this um, salmony light pink um, with gold uh, 
polka dots on there or pin drops some people might say because they're little ones and then I've used um, similar inks on my tags I made um, so I've got that same shell pink happening on the tags and I've used a tag here that has the same um, flowers a color in the flowers and yet it still has come up quite well let's see if I can just move that a bit for you so you can see the tags um it still has it reads quite well but it's definitely a boy layout boys love to play with fire and my grandson which features in most of these layouts um loves coming to nanny and pops to play with fire but you can see how you can incorporate and mix different colors to um use up some of those feminine papers if you happen to have a household full of boys and need to scrap boy layouts all right so that's the first one next one so this is um not using any mixed media <laughs> No mixed media to be seen. It's not really um, featuring girl papers as such, but I did use this background, this wood grain, which does have a lot of pink running through it, and there is some red as well. Um, one of the things I do like to do is because often, because it's a digital age and we all have so many photos, I will make just one layout and then I will do pocket pages and I will keep the pocket pages really simple. You can see how simple these are. There's nothing there, basically. A couple of stickers put on, but that is how I often will add extra photos in. Okay, here's one where I've just done a little bit of mixed media. It is um, just some plastic bag smooching on there. And some stamping in the background here with that butterfly and the tread, tire tread. Now these papers, again, I've used some floral in there. And I've just tried to pull the colours from the tractor. And that sort of mixes in with, there's some red happening through here and green in our floral in the background. And I pulled in a butterfly as well. Um, this particular layout was um, a challenge that was being done by Janet Madison from the art from RTS Scrapbooking. So this is actually her um, sketch layout that I've worked from here. And here is the page two. It's a double layout. Once again, I've thrown that butterfly on there. I think it's working okay. Okay, next one is very grungy and boy -y. So this one I have um, put down my background and then stamped all over it. Once again, I've used that tread stamp. I've also thrown in some, um, which it looks like I've splattered it, but it's actually a stamp that splatters. It's a Tim Holtz one off his uh, mushroom collection. And I've put in a few little stars throughout there. If you look carefully, behind here though, there is floral paper again. So there's quite a lot of floral paper. This um, layout, and it's a double layout, I made as part of the bash, bachelor, <laughs> bachelor um, challenge that was happening. And uh, you had to try and use a whole scrapbook pad. I didn't get through all mine. I just don't have enough time having to work. But um, within my scrapbook paper pad that I selected, it did have quite a few florals. So I have had to use floral papers throughout. Even here, I've mounted this photo, which is very masculine, um, with a floral border. And you really hardly notice it at all. Here's page two. And you can see these are just chipboard pieces. I just grunge them up with some ink. I love to do that. They make anything look good with a bit of ink. Okay, uh, this one I think I shared online already. Some of these in this stack you will have seen online perhaps if you're in some of the groups I'm in. Um, this is another one that was from the bachelor. 
competition and you can see again more pinks happening in here so we've got more shell pink papers i completely stamped the background of this put in used a um, plaid stencil and built up some plaid sort of design in the background stamped all this brown text through here and some foliage there's a clock and down here i've got my little fake washi tape that i made Ooh, let's see fake washi tape that i made um, i'm trying to see if but you can see that is quite girly papers in here and i have been able to make it look reasonably max um masculine Alright, this one people probably have seen because this was in, this is my first layer as part of the um, Collection Obsession series challenge that's happening at the moment. There's quite a few people, creatives, that are joining in with that. It's my first one that I've done ever before that involves videoing the process. Anyway, this one doesn't really use any um, female page, uh, pages or papers um, but I have got in here a very sweet hello in, an, in a pastel apricot orange that is working beautifully just because of the skin tones within the photo so sometimes it's your photo that's going to pull your colors in your design um, if you're interested in any of how to make any of these um, acetate embellishments or these, this leaf embellishment where I've used texture paste, you can see that in some of my other videos that are on my channel. All right, this one I just put up this morning. Um, once again, this is um, not a, a female theme kit it is very much a boy themed one but i just thought i'd throw it in there and show you um because it's got a lot of mixed media in the back now i have done in the past this mixed media background before where i've gone with really pastely girly colors and i've created like a quilt um putting my square on the flipping it so it's a diamond shape and it's worked beautifully if you want to see more about this layout watch today's video that went up all right another boy one um, once again this one has quite girly papers embedded in it so this is well, when i say boyish I, it's got a masculine feel to it it's about gin <laughs> one of my favorite drinks um and brewing gin is what it's about so if you have a look at this background paper it does look quite girly we've got all these frames which are quite lacy looking you might see it better on this one actually just wondering can you see there we go um but i feel that that it has come up okay because I've incorporated some foliage stamps and I've chosen the other colors to be more masculine. So I've inked up this. This is just a um, printout that was given out at the um, at the gin making brewery, um, and I've used wooden elements, and I've used this dark chocolate brown text. And I just feel that that is pulling it more towards a masculine feel. Same with my choice of stickers here. You know, really, this is a pale, pastely sort of almost like what you would use for a baby layout. But because I've stamped on it in the black and I've added um, text on there, which is wooden um, stickers, it's pulling a more masculine feel okay kind of stretching the boy theme thing here <laughs> it is a male kangaroo <laughs> um, okay so if you look at this one 
we've got a whole page of flowers and leaves as the background we've got behind here floral strips coming through and our tag has florals on it as well but once again i'm trying to pull it in so it's more um, nature based and not so feminine looking so even though i've got pink flowers happening through there the way i've put the paper and laid it out um, is reduce the impact of that but also it's incorporating this brown wood grain through it and making your um, mats photo mats dark brown as well and pulling in some punch borders it sort of reduces the amount of um, femininity that is pulled by the background paper and the florals in the background. Ah, I've thrown this one in here. It is not, as you can see, anything to do with boys. <laughs> However, um, I just feel that this really reads masculine to me. And it's because of these colour choices that I've used. I've put greys and browns in the stamp background. I mean, obviously insects, quite popular with boys. I'm a huge fan of insects. You'll see them in quite a few of my layouts. Anytime I'm trying to do a garden layout or, you know, down by the river or any, anywhere I can get some insects in, I'm putting them in there. <laughs> so we've got you know, feminine butterflies mixed with the insects. But it's really the choice of colours that is making it read masculine. Yes, there's some yellow flowers in here and they're in there because of the flowers in the photos. But if we took those away, this sort of a layout with these tones can really make things that look quite feminine like butterflies and that more masculine all right here's another one um, that was based on Janet Madison's layout she had this layout with the strips down here and covered with embellishments so this is a double layout and it is incorporating flowers throughout <laughs> There's butterflies, they're flat, and there's flowers, even though it's about riding quad bikes and motorcycles. You don't really notice those because of the bright colours that's in the photos that I've picked up in the papers. This paper along the back here actually has dolls on it, <laughs> which you can't really see because I've hidden them with some washi tape and I've thrown the embellishments on top. You can disguise feminine papers really easily. So people just read it as, oh, colours that match in beautifully here. All right, this one's quite girly. This is my darling stepfather. I love him dearly. He's just so special in my life. He's been amazing. Um, this is very girly. Once again, this is um, based on a layout in one of the challenges from Janet Madison from RTS Scrapbooking. I've got pinks happening through here. We've got pink, very pale pink, um, what would you call it? Weatherboards? I think in America you call it shiplack, is that right? Uh, we don't use that term over here. And I've added some butterflies. There's love heart paper through here. There's this little bird um, with flowers again. So it is quite girly. But it works because the photo I've chosen to use with it has those colours in it. So these pinks are lining up with his skin tones. These pale blues are pulling from the sky. Uh, this one. This is my darling husband. 
raking up honky nuts. So I'm not sure if you know, um, if you're in the US or in Canada, what a honky nut is, but they're these big round nuts, <laughs> like imagine like golf ball size, um, that come off our eucalyptus trees. And my husband and I uh, were, we've been a bit naughty lately and not been doing it. We were going for a three kilometre walk every day. And we, and we walk along this, which is actually a graveled, um, compressed fire break that runs along some of the back of the properties and down along the river. And there's this one tree <laughs> that just drops hundreds of honky nuts. And it's not the tree's fault, really. It is the cockatoos coming in and chewing them off and that. But it's really dangerous to walk across. So um, one day my husband was like, I'm just going to rake it up. I don't want you slipping over. And so he carry, carried the rake for a one kilometre of our walk, got to the tree, and he spent all this time raking up honky nuts and getting them off the track so we'd have so so I would have safe walking and wouldn't be slipping anymore um not this is not feminine in any way it is uh these papers and the embellishments are from um the Australian company company uniquely creative and I just wanted to show you this one because I like it <laughs> Uh, I have done some mixed media on top of the papers there. There's some stenciling happening there with just some white gesso over the top. Okay, I just like this one. That's why I wanted to show you. All right, here we've got another one. Once again, from Janet Madison's RTS challenge that she was having. <clears throat> so here we go. It's really colorful. There are flowers in there, even though the layout is about my grandson and my stepdad using a forklift. So we've got feminine paper florals through here. We've got a camera that's surrounded by flowers. and But it's just not really reading as... A feminine page because I've incorporated mixed media I'm always pulling from the photos you can see the mixed media colors I've used it's from the photos in the the colors in the jeans and the colors on the loader and it completely disguises the fact that I've really used feminine papers oh look even I tucked a little flower up there so there's lot, lots you can do to hide your feminine papers and use them up. This is another one where I have done a very simple, oops, it's only one side, um, pocket page to go with the layout. All right, this one's a little bit older. Um, this is, once again, using the Uniquely Creative Papers, one of their collections. And in this one, I just splashed on um, using the paper bag technique and using a paintbrush, just splashed on some paint to make the background. Oh, oh no, it was oxide ink, so I can tell it's oxide ink. It's not, not watercolour paint. Sometimes I'll use watercolour paint. Sometimes I'll use oxide inks. Uh, but I wanted to talk about these. These are so old. These are from Top Line Creations. <laughs> and yes, they're blue, but they're really soft and baby blue and sort of delicate. But I think by just sanding, sometimes just some sanding can make it look a bit more grungy and um, pull it, even if they were pink ones, which I have as well. Um if they were pink ones sanded, you can sort of pull it to that more grungy, boyish feel. More creative, uh, uniquely creative papers here. Again, I'm just showing you this one to show you that I don't always do mixed media. So you can just see this is a simple layout little bit of fussy cut 
cutting happening with the uh, tags and the leaves there. Oh, uh, actually, I have painted those. <laughs> I lied. There is a bit of mixed media. Um, but it's pretty simple, quick design and layout. Okay, here we go with my gorgeous grandson again. Um, the papers are, again, quite feminine. We've got butterflies, we've got flowers, and I even chose to put in love hearts in the layout. But it's looking colourful and fun. I'm using, I've put um, this photo because of the orange, clearly. And there's a bit of um, a light tealy green in there, which sort of reads with the light butterflies. Little bit of ink splashed on. I love it. This is his favourite coffee shop. He loves to go and have a little um, kid-friendly cappuccino <laughs> which isn't cappuccino he usually goes for something that's like vanilla flavored or something like that but he, he loves going here and his mum and he often will ride there um, on their bikes early in the morning and when any time I come to visit and we're in town he's always nan can we go to the coffee shop so okay um just another one to show you that I don't always use mixed media. There's a couple of things on there on here which are mixed media, but most of it isn't. Once again, these papers, not this strip here, but the papers and the embellishments is from a um, uniquely creative collection. I can't remember the name, sorry, but um, the only mixed media I've got on here is this little. Um, smiley face that I've inked up and over here which is something I haven't done for quite a while is I really wanted <laughs> uh, to use these letters only they were the wrong color so I just grabbed some Nouveau drops obviously not this color um, and went over the top of it I think they were even glitter letters and I've made them metallic it's a good way to use up your stash if you haven't got the right colour. Um, this one I've thrown in because I only recently did this. These are quite recent photos. But the paper is really, really old. This is so old. Really old. Um, yeah. it's. I've had that in my stash 15 years maybe or more um, and this one is quite old as well this was from top line creations so I just thought I would show you because everything old can be new again as we're finding out <laughs> with things coming back in fashion so it's just using up old stash and super simple again just gluing down papers and gluing down stickers and gluing down die cuts and keeping it nice and simple. Now here we've got one that uses lots of very feminine coloured papers. And of course I've used these papers and, and these were just um, strips, border strips, and little strips cut out of random scraps. Um, but I've, I chose the colours based on this mug here, which is actually a mug that was given to me as a um, by my oldest son for Mother's Day. It says, um, what does it say? Mum, some, oh, Mum, some of the reasons that I love you. And it's got this pie chart that has these colours in it. Um, but obviously it's my grandson with cocoa on his face um, 
have and we're having a bit of a laugh because we put in one of the giant small marshmallows in in his cocoa so it's just a bit of fun but you can see it works well even though i've used quite feminine papers there's a love heart you can have a love heart for anything can't you And last one, just to show another simple design where I haven't done any mixed media. It's also using up really old papers. This paper I actually got and this, um, oh, and this at an op shop. So I don't know about you, but I'm always calling into op shops because you never know what you can score. And what I did score, there's two big stashes, and I mean like, I came home with two inches of paper. <laughs> I'm a scrapbooking paper because of course I need that. Um, but in there was some beauties, some old stuff. So this is an old basic grey. It is just gorgeous. I wish we had basic grey, but I love basic grey. Um, yeah, so fake it even back then we were faking it um, but just simple design matching of the photos pulling with colors in the photos super simple all right so that's it guys just thought um, there was an interest in boy theme layouts and there was comments as I said about oh I wish more companies would would make more layouts that were boy themed and not so um, feminine all the time and I completely agree with you however you can use feminine papers and make them your own and use them in boy themed layouts at least I do I just you just got to change things up <laughs> anyway hope that's a some help to some people or just a bit of fun having a look at some of my work um, I certainly do a whole range of styles from everything that's really simple just layering some papers and sticking it down um, right through to completely making my embellishments from scratch and my background papers from scratch see you next time mm -hmm.